Chris Sale has always been like a nice, cool, sexy balloon. Like imagine a balloon that looks really cool, but at any moment it could pop. Kaboom, it's done. That's been Chris Sale the moment he was drafted, called up, pitched for the White Sox, and it's been the case his entire career. He got called up to the big leagues just two months after being drafted. That's insane. But what that shows is the fact that Sale had big league ready stuff while in college. It's rare, but sometimes you'll get that like we just saw with 2024's Rookie of the Year, Paul Skeens. But Sale was ready for the highest level in the world the moment he was picked in the first round by Chicago. And as expected, he was great, never skipping a beat. But like I said with the whole weird balloon analogy, Sale was always criticized as someone who could break down at any moment, that he was too skinny and had too unorthodox of a delivery to stay healthy, and it was only a matter of time before his elbow said item out and exploded. His rookie year was out of the bullpen where he was good, the White Sox didn't need to rush him into the rotation, but that's where 2012 came in. His first year starting games in the big leagues, and Sale was not just named an all-star, but picked as the starter. He had a fantastic season, and followed that up by continuing to be a top pitcher in the league, throwing over 200 innings in four of his five starting seasons with the White Sox, being named an all-star every single one of them, and his strikeout numbers only went up too. Sale really was something special. No injuries were going on, his elbow was still attached to his arm, and by 2016, with the White Sox in a rebuilding phase, it was time to trade him. The other Sox came calling, and during the offseason before 2017, the two struck a blockbuster trade sending Sale to Boston, something that ended up as a massive success for the Red Sox. They weren't only getting a good pitcher, but someone who had the mentality of, I'm going to rip your throat out while he was on the mound. And even off the mound, too. Hell, in his last year with the White Sox, the team was supposed to wear these throwback uniforms that Sale hated, as he felt the pullover jerseys were too baggy and was inconvenient for his pitching and made things unnecessarily more difficult for everyone. So while the team was practicing on the field, he went into the clubhouse and cut up the throwback uniforms that had been laid out in the clubhouse. Just straight up tore them up. People have said it was with scissors, others claimed it was with a big knife, but either way, what we do know is the jerseys did not make it, unfortunately. But anyway, off to Boston he goes, and the trade part specifically worked out for the Red Sox, not the second part, which we'll soon get into, but Sale probably had the best season of his career in his first year in Boston, leading all of baseball in innings, total strikeouts, and strikeouts per nine. He was the best strikeout pitcher in baseball and finished the closest he'd ever been to a Cy Young award in second place. And as great as the next year was, it was also the beginning of the likely end for Chris Sale's dominance. For good. The dominance didn't end in 2018. He was actually even better than he was in 2017. It was ridiculous. He was pumping 100 miles an hour to go with his filthy slider. Just unfair. But there was a slight little itty titty bitty issue. A shoulder issue. Sales velocity eventually went down and he just wasn't really the same guy to end the year until the very end when he closed out the World Series in the most badass way possible, getting hyped up by his teammates in the bullpen before going in to strike out the side with each strikeout making each hitter look uglier than the last. The look Sale had before striking Machado out, I mean this looks like the kind of thing you see before you die. It was the perfect ending and before 2019, it got even better. Sale signed a 5 year $145 million extension to stay in Boston, which is the second part I was talking about. There are two ways to look at Chris Sale's career in Boston. The trade and then contract. The trade worked out perfectly, but post extension? It became a nightmare. Sale's 2019 season was weird, but it fit right into how the team was. Like he wasn't bad, his strikeout stuff was still great, but he finished with an ERA over 4 for the first time in his career, and by the end of 2019 his elbow was barking. A visit to the doctor's office claimed he didn't need surgery, but his year would end early, and as for 2020, there was no 2020. Sale's elbow had had it, telling Sale they had a great run together, but he just couldn't take it anymore, exploding and leading to Sale having to get Tommy John surgery. Sale was expected to begin 2020 late, obviously still recovering from the surgery, and wouldn't return until August, where he was pretty good obviously not someone to rely on the way you could in years past but still good 2022 was where that was about to change sale was fully back ready to pitch a full year for the first time in a long time only to realize his body was made of glass glue and duct tape i actually got the privilege of being up close and personal with sale and a couple of other red sox pitchers while they trained away from the facility because of the lockout in 2022 nobody could be at the mlb spring facilities or anything so i was able to watch sale throw bullpens at florida gulf coast and he was awesome he may seem like a crazy competitor ready to bite your head off while pitching which 
I mean, that is the case. But personally, he's one of the nicest and most personable down to earth players I've ever spoken to. He didn't act like he was above anyone. He wasn't cliche about anything. He was very real and just normal, which I appreciated. It was just a bunch of dudes shooting the shit. He suffered a rib injury soon after while throwing to hitters at FGCU that he didn't even fully understand the reason behind. It just happened. And no, don't blame me. I didn't do anything. He missed the beginning of the season. His return kept getting delayed more and more until he finally did just to break his finger on a line shot in his second start of the year. Just what? And then three weeks after that, oh yeah, he was reported to have broken his right wrist while riding his bike. How insane is that? His elbow is healthy and then he suffers back to back to back freak accidents to three different areas of his body. As Albert Einstein once wisely said, you simply cannot make that shit up. And 2023 ended up being just meh. Sale finally pitched the most innings he had since 2019, which isn't saying much. And he also dealt with more injury issues like with his shoulder, his scapula. And at this point, not only was this a complete disaster for the Red Sox, but Chris Sale's career seemed to be on its last leg, barely. His career had no legs at this point, just crawling, begging for its life. And Sale's not dumb. He knew this, and because of this, pulled his kids out of school so he and his family could spend what was thought to be his final season in the big leagues traveling and experiencing things as he would go on the road with the team. It doesn't matter how good you are. Age, regression, injuries, it catches up to everybody. And Sale understood it would be nice to have his family around for the final year. At least more so. And then something kind of unexpected happened when the Red Sox traded Sale to the Atlanta Braves, who clearly still saw something valuable in Sale, especially considering they immediately extended him to a two year, $38 million deal beyond 2024. Now, how valuable did they see him being exactly? I mean, it's not like they were expecting him to win the Cy Young Award or anything, obviously. That's far fetched. But they at least felt he could be somewhat what he used to be, despite being 35 years old with a body seemingly made of paper. So, what did he do? Promptly put up the best season of his entire career. No, seriously. Somehow, some way, Sale was as good as he's ever been, proving to the world and most importantly to himself that he wasn't done. Leading the National League in strikeouts, all of baseball in ERA, ERA+, plus, fielding independent pitching, which was even lower than his ERA, meaning through all the dominance, Sale still got unlucky. He had the lowest home runs allowed per nine innings in baseball, led everyone in wins with 18, win percentage, and strikeouts per nine, doing all this in 177 innings. So he was back to throwing a full year's worth of innings while being the best pitcher in baseball with the best strikeout stuff. I mean, are you joking? Yeah, forget that final season thing. And after all the disaster he'd been through before 2024, Sale was finally awarded with something that felt long overdue, a Cy Young Award. Felt like he should have had one 10 years ago. And it looked for the longest time like he was really going to go out without getting one, but no more. And man, does he freaking deserve this. It's such a great redemption story for a guy who is the definition of doing what it takes to be on top. He was on top to end 2018 and then got a fat contract. Everything was perfect until the next five years just had bad thing after bad thing happen. And just when you thought Sale had truly broken down like all the critics said he eventually would and end his career that way... It's like that moment in a movie where you think the hero's dead until a hand reaches up and the villains realize, ah shit, we're screwed. I mean, is this not the exact plot of Rocky 3? He starts out on top, gets knocked out for the first time in his career, everything looks bad, then he comes back to kick the most ass he's ever kicked in his career to finish back on top. You're not slick, MLB script writers. Hitters couldn't have been more screwed in 2024, with Sale not only just being good again, but like I said, legit having the greatest season of his career, ending an award that he truly deserves and it was beautiful. Let me know your thoughts and thank you for watching.